I moved to Seattle about a year ago, and I figured it would be a good idea to make a video about my new home for my friends, family, and anyone else interested in learning about the Emerald City. So I hope you like what you see. One of the most famous attractions to Seattle is the Pike Place Market, which was founded in 1907 and has been operating continuously ever since. It is always very full of people, both locals and tourists, who are looking to buy a whole host of different things, such as different types of fish, different types of shellfish, like crab meat, or even fresh produce, or beautiful flowers. They also sell a lot of artwork and crafts, as well as a whole host of magazines. Pretty much anything you can expect to find at a market. And if you get tired from all the walking around, you can find Rachel the Bronze Pig and take a seat. On the northern edge of the Pike Place Market, you'll find the first Starbucks. And if you walk a little beyond that, you'll find a park. It's usually full of tourists and homeless people. And if you're lucky enough, you might be able to spot a cruise ship getting ready to take people off to Alaska. Also along the Puget Sound Harbor, you'll find many things, such as shops, restaurants, as well as the Seattle Aquarium, which is a great place for both young and old to gawk at fish in large tanks or to study mammal sea life lounging around. Nestled between the skyscrapers, you'll find the Seattle Art Museum with its terracotta exterior and its working man statue greeting you at the entrance. Walk a bit south and you'll discover this striking angular and modern building. It's the Seattle Central Library, designed by architect Rem Koolhaas. Once inside, you'll be presented with a very open and inviting space, as well as an array of computers, and, if you look hard enough, you might be able to find some books. Just south of the library is the Columbia Center, which is the tallest skyscraper in Seattle and the fourth tallest skyscraper west of the Mississippi. One thing that might bring you to Seattle is the Washington State Convention Center. Located directly over Interstate Highway 5, this was the site of the 1999 World Trade Organization meeting, which drew large crowds of protesters and made national headlines. Just north of downtown, you'll find the Seattle Center, which is a large fairground constructed for the 1962 World's Fair. With its spacey monorail and its towering space needle, it was meant to represent the city of the future. The Seattle Center is very child friendly and includes a large fountain in which kids can play, a children's museum intended for very young children, and a Pacific Science Center intended for slightly older children. This last place also includes a butterfly garden in which you can walk around butterflies and get up close and personal with them. Another thing not to be missed is the Experience Music Project and Science Fiction Museum which is a Frank Gehry designed building that defies photography from the ground. And it doesn't look like a whole lot from the top of the space needle either. But inside, you'll find a great history of guitars, Jimi Hendrix, and science fiction over the last century. One thing you might not want to miss at the Seattle Center is ascending the Space Needle. Although it's not terribly tall at 605 feet, or 184 meters, and it's a bit pricey at $16 a head, and you may have to wait an hour in line for a 43 second elevator ride, it does offer commanding views of the city, as well as bragging rights that you made it to the top. Once you do get on top, you could walk around the 360 degree viewing platform and get a very decent view of the downtown skyline, as well as the Puget Sound Harbor and Lake Union, among many other sites in the city. Sometimes this place is filled with, uh... Just north of Lake Union, you'll find Gasworks Park, which is a park constructed from the rusted remnants of a gas refinery in operation from 1906 to 1956. Here you'll find people flying kites from the highest hill, as well as others lounging around, 
putting the worries of the city behind them. For the best view in Seattle, however, you must head to Cary Park in Queen Anne. Here you can get a view of not only the skyline, including the Space Needle, but you can also get a great view of Mount Rainier, looming large on the distant horizon. If you want to learn about the history of Seattle, I suggest heading to Pioneer Square, which is just south of downtown. Here, I highly recommend taking the underground tour, on which you'll descend a staircase below the current street level in Seattle, and be able to walk on the original street level. On this tour, you'll learn why the street level was changed, be able to see remnants of the original water system, as well as other junk lying around, and you'll be able to peer up through the sidewalk on which you were previously walking. One of the things that makes Seattle great is that it's composed of so many unique and interesting neighborhoods. Neighborhoods that are defined by the geography, such as waterways and hills, that separate them. And yes, Seattle does have a lot of coffee shops, but they're not all called Starbucks. Honest. Seattle is also very rich in Asian restaurants, including Thai restaurants, which you'll find are quite ubiquitous. Overall, Seattle is a very interesting and very hilly city. It's a place full of artists, as well as full of tolerance. It's a place where east meets west. Although the winters may get a bit cloudy and rainy, it's never exceedingly cold. And the summers are warm, sunny, and never exceedingly hot. It's definitely a cool place to live, and a very interesting place to visit.